Hi, thanks for having me. Good afternoon. As Eddie said, my name is James Dorothy, and I'm going to give you the history of 33 the mile in the next about 40 seconds or so. Um, people often ask how we know the first tricolour was flown in Waterford City and how we can be so concrete about the evidence. It's all down to the Mayor of Waterford, a gentleman called Sylvester Reddington. On the morning of the 7th of March 1848, Mr. Reddington was out walking his dog, saw a big tricolour hanging out at 33 the mile, and he did what every good civil servant does. He asked for advice. He wrote to Dublin Castle and said, There's a big tricolour hanging in Waterford, what should I do? Now we don't know what reply he got, but a week later the tricolour still flew. And that's the story behind how we know the first tricolour flew on the 7th of March 1848. Thank you, Jim. And Jim has become a, an expert at this stage on the history of not only the tricolour, but certainly of the buildings here within Waterford. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome onto what we would call in military terms the parade ground, Councillor John Cummins, Mayor of Waterford City and County. The Mayor will be, is being escorted by Lieutenant Billy Curtin of the Naval Reserve. He will be escorted to the centre point of the Honour Guard, where he will be extended what we call a ceremonial salute as Mayor of Waterford City and County. The Honour Guard today is led by Petty Officer John Stevenson, who some of you might actually recognise, uh, works in the Granville Hotel, which coincidentally enough is the birthplace of Thomas Francis Marr. To the rear of the Honour Guard there, we have a number of uh, veterans, and you'll also see them over my left shoulder here, and they're all flying what we call their old unit colours, unit pennants, or standards. And today we have representatives from the American Legion, the Irish 63rd John F. Kennedy Branch, the Soldiers of Peace International, UN Veterans, and obviously the Order of Ex-Servicemen, ONE, which is the Order for Ex-Servicemen with the Defence Forces of Ireland, and we also have members of the Irish Naval Association present. I think you'll agree that the flags at the exhibit today uh, certainly add to the occasion. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like, like it to be upstanding to welcome Minister Simon Coveney, who has travelled here today to represent the, the government as he enters the parade ground there now. <laughs> Minister Coveney will receive what we call military honours from the Honour Guard here, and he is receiving those military honours on behalf of the Mayor and the people of Waterford as the city's guest. He's been ably escorted today by Lieutenant Alan Dalton and Lieutenant Billy Curtin, and musical honours will be rendered by the Barrick Street Concert Band. What has happened there is uh, Petty Officer John Stevenson has invited the Minister to inspect the Honour Guard. The people on parade here today will have spent an hour to an hour and a half last night preparing their uniforms to have it ready for inspection by the Minister and he will now proceed to ask for permission to dismiss the Guard. The Minister is now escorted to his uh, seat in the middle of the VIPs there. Again, normally you would remember we have the VIPs behind us here in the centre stage. Because of the inclement weather, we've just moved them into the shelter of the actual marquee. And again, just to remind you of who we have in attendance here today, we have the Mayor of Waterford City and County, Councillor John Cummins, Minister Simon Coveney, His Highness Kevin O'Malley, American Ambassador to Ireland, his Highness Jean-Pierre Thébault, French Ambassador to Ireland. His Highness Kevin Vickers, Canadian Ambassador to Ireland. We have Senator Morris Cummins, Head of the Shannon. Members of the Oireachtas, I have some fellow councillors present. 
Lieutenant Colonel Sean Flynn, Officer Command in the 69th Regiment and nine members of his unit. We have a, a representative from the Garda Shield Corner, members of the Defence Forces and Civil Defence, and as I previously spoke about, the retired veteran members, and also, most importantly, we have yourselves, which ensure that it will be a, a good ceremony. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're actually ready now to actually start the ceremony. And effectively, what we will do is we'll open the ceremony with a piece from the Island of Ireland Peace Choir. And the piece we're going to sing here today is a piece that they will be singing on Easter Saturday as a part of the 2016 Centenary Ceremony uh, on, in Dublin. And the piece is called Departing Glass, and this will be their first time performed and only time before that prestigious event. So I hand you over to the Peace Choir of Ireland. special piece. I would like to introduce to my left, uh, Mary Darmody, who's actually signing here for us today with Irish uh, Sign Language, and who's ably assisted by Craig from Corlin and Oak. 
I think you will notice a number of people here with the purple jackets on today and they are young members of basically the young council of Waterford and they're very much assisting council events going forward. Also from a, a recent motion from Councillor Mary Roach, all councillors unanimously supported the use of sign language at all council events and I think this is the first council event where we've had a signer present. And I think Mary's doing a fabulous job at the moment and I'd like to thank her for being here today voluntarily. So now we're ready to commence the ceremony and we're actually going to call on the Thomas Francis Marr will be led by again by the Thomas Francis Marr band and we're going to call on the flag party who will be responsible for the commemorative raising of the flags here today. round of applause there for the Thomas Francis Marr Fife and Drunk Band who celebrate 120 years and reign from the Yellow Road. Well done guys. So what we have going on behind us there at the moment is we have the three flag officers have arrived onto parade there. The officer in the centre will be the Irish tricolour flag officer and that's Lieutenant Mark, Martin Durkin who is travelling from Dublin to be with us today. To his right as we look at it we have Chief Hayes who's actually travelled from Dublin also to be with us today. And then to the left, as we look at it, we have Chief Petty Officer Anthony Power from Waterford. The, what we'll have now is Thomas Francis Marr will present the tricolour to the Irish flag officer, and we have the Ambassador of France and the Ambassador of the United States will present their respective flags to the flag officers. Oh. From France, this tricolour has been proudly born. I present it to my native land and trust that beneath its folds, the hands of the Irish Protestant and the Irish Catholic may be classed in generous and historic brotherhood.
Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have the ambassadors will resume their seats there. And what we're going to have is up behind you also we have the Canadian national flag which will be hoisted in front of the Bishop's Palace. And just for a quick 30 seconds we're going to have James Doherty, Doherty, Doherty explain the relevance of the, additional inter the various international flags that we are hoisting here today. Thanks for that Eddie. You're going to see four flags on display here today. Obviously the Irish tricolour needs no explanation. But you're also going to see the American, the French, and up behind you in the Bishop's Palace, the Canadian flag. The similarly, I suppose, the significance of the Canadian flag to start with is the Maher family had huge personal connections to Newfoundland, and that's where they made their fortune. And we're very grateful to have the Canadian ambassador here today. The American flag, Thomas Francis Maher led the Irish Brigade in the American Civil War. We represented us here from the 69th. And the French flag, the tricolour, was inspiration for the Irish tricolour. A man in 1848 travelled to France, was presented with a fabulous silk tricolour. Unfortunately for Mar, what he actually wanted was an army, but he got a tricolour. And he returned to Ireland, and that became later the official flag of the Irish state. And now hand you back, Teddy. Thank you, Jim. That was very informative there. So now we will have the Barrick Street Gonser Band. They will play what we call in military terms a salute to the colours, which is a, a musical honour being rendered to the inanimate object, which is the flag. So the flag officers will proceed, proceed now, attach the flags to the flagpoles and raise them in a slow, dignified manner to a, dr a slow drum roll from the Barrick Street Gonser Band also. Just while they're getting the flags there ready, every military establishment and government building in Ireland flies a tricolour from sunrise to sunset. And in the Navy we fly the tricolour 365 days a year, extending the sovereignty of the state out to the 12 mile territorial limit and beyond that on behalf of the European Union to the European Exclusion Zone. We also have uh, various missions throughout the world, the Irish flag being flown, and you'll probably see on TV that Irish soldiers, Air Corps members and Naval Service members proudly wear the tricolour on their left hand sleeve. We will now simultaneously have the American, the French and the Canadian flags, which I remind you is in front of the Bishop's Palace, again raised in a slow, dignified manner to a slow drum roll. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to allow the, the honour guard uh, leave the parade ground because, as you probably understand and you've seen, they're actually carrying the current weapon of the Defence Force, the Steyr 5.56mm Army Universal Gun. So, the honour guard will actually leave the parade ground at the moment. <laughs> Well, I'm going to lean in from the back. Okay. 
Military recital that's often played early in the morning are to muster or inspire your troops.
Peace Choir, ladies and gentlemen. Now I would like to invite the Mayor of Waterford City and Council, County, Councillor John Cummins, to come forward and address you. The Mayor is a PE teacher at St Paul's Community College and is son of Senator Morris Cummins, who's actually here today also and is a former City Councillor. And again, the current Mayor also held the mayorality in the city in 2013 2014, having the honour of being the youngest Mayor. Thank you very much, Eddie. Minister Coveney, Leader of Shannon Aaron, Your Excellencies, Canadian Ambassador Mr. Vickers, US Ambassador Mr. O'Malley, French Ambassador Monsieur, Monsignor Thibault, the Chief Executive Michael Welch, fellow councillors, Lieutenant Colonel Sean Flynn, Officer Commanding the 69th Regiment New York, members of the Defence and Civil Defence, Defence Forces and Civil Defence veterans and retired members of all armed forces, ladies and gentlemen. As Mayor of Waterford City and County, I again want to formally welcome each and every one of you to today's celebration where we gather to mark an important chapter in Irish history that unfolded right here on the Mall 168 years ago this weekend. I had the honour of addressing this prestigious event as Mayor of Waterford City Council two years ago during the city's celebrations of our 1100th anniversary of our founding, a magnificent milestone in Waterford's fine history, and I'm delighted once again to be here this afternoon. We are here today to celebrate the occasion when Thomas Francis Marr, a true Irish and American patriot, flew the first ever tricolour from 33 de Mal in 1848. The tricolour has become our national flag and is one of the most power powerful symbols of our Irishness at home and abroad. Marr is a fascinating character and one who was certainly well ahead of his time. Having been on the council myself now for seven years and serving as mayor for the second time, at the age of 28, I still consider myself young, and I am. But Mar was three years younger when he raised the flag for the first time here in Waterford City in 1848. For me, it's not the raising of the flag that is the most important part. It's what it symbolizes. You heard some of the most famous words spoken by actor Kieran Doyle a short time ago when he read, the white in the centre signifies a lasting truce between the orange and the green, and I trust that beneath its folds the hands of the Irish Protestant and the Irish Catholic may be clasped in generous and heroic brotherhood. That sentence is as relevant today as it was when it was first spoken in 1848 particularly when one sees the terrible car bomb which exploded in Belfast on Friday, injuring a long-serving prison officer. This despicable act is a reminder, as if we needed it, that peace is fragile and there is still a small minority of individuals intent on wreaking havoc and undermining our state. Both the people of Ireland, North and South, have travelled too far to go back to those dark and troubled days. Those people who carried out that attack and are intent on inflicting more misery are terrorists and will never succeed because just like Thomas Francis Marr, the people of Ireland are stronger and believe in the symbolism of the Irish tricolour. And that is why it is fitting that we have the All Ireland Peace Choir here with us, led by Phil Brennan. The origin of the choir rose from the ashes of the dreadful Oma bombing and I was delighted to hear last night at the gala dinner that they are going to form a major part of the national commemoration of 1916 in Dublin and I wish them the very best of luck as I'm sure you do over those number of days. As a proud Watford and Irish man, I have been delighted to see the revival in interest in our history in recent years and I want to commend Minister Coveney for his foresight to sanction the use of the Defence Forces to deliver a flag to each primary school in the country as part of the 1916 centenary programme. And I know that each and every primary school child has learned of Thomas Francis Marr and the origin of the flag here in Watford City, which is truly fantastic. 
On Friday, I had the good fortune to address the first citizenship ceremony of 2016 in City Hall, which saw over 100 people from all corners of the globe taking an oath of fidelity to the nation before receiving their certificates of naturalization. The great joy and pride that was evident reminded me of what a privilege it is to be Irish and what Irish means, what being Irish means to these people from around the world who have made their homes here and have taken the huge step of becoming Irish citizens. Appropriately so, the ceremony took place only a stone's throw away from where Mar raised the tricolour for the first time. In concluding, it would be remiss of me not to acknowledge the involvement of the Thomas Francis Mar Fife and Drum Band, the Barrack Street Band and the All Ireland Peace Choir, whom I've mentioned already, for enriching our gathering here this afternoon. Music is threaded through the tapestry of Waterford's history, and it's hugely appropriate that it forms a central role in this ceremony. I want to also thank our Discipline Guard of Honour from the Naval Reserve, and very importantly, to thank Lieutenant Colonel Sean Flynn, officers, NCOs, and the men of the 69th Regiment, New York, who join with us each year and add so greatly to our service. Finally, I want to thank and recognise the work done by Anne Cusack and our committee who put so much into organising the events over the weekend. And to you, the people who have come, come out in such numbers on such a miserable day. As Mayor, I'm delighted to have addressed the gathering of such importance and diversity that represents the true spirit of Ireland and its diaspora. And finally, just to wish all the mothers a very happy Mother's Day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor Commons, and an inspiring few words there. Um, I would now like to invite uh, Minister Simon Coveney to bring him to say a few words. And I think I have to endorse the Mayor's comments there to say that Minister Coveney has been hugely supportive of our endeavours to actually have this event supported by the Department of Defence each year and the resources that's extended to us by the state in running the event. So thank you, Minister Coveney, on behalf of the committee. Mayor, Senators, Ambassadors for, from, from the United States of America, from France and Canada, in particular, Lieutenant Colonel Sean uh, Flynn uh, and all of the members of the 1st Battalion of the 69th Infantry Regiment in New York, members of the Defence Forces past and present, members of the Defence Forces Reserve, guests, friends, volunteers, musicians uh, and indeed actors uh, who have really brought this event to life today. As a Tara Kosunta is on our more dumps of our show, Aaron, all called Staru Lagas Special to show. This is uh, a significant and important event for a very proud city, commemorating uh, one of your most significant sons, Thomas Francis Marr. In many ways, uh, he is almost a mythical figure in Ireland, but is somebody who I think this year is getting the recognition that he deserves across every primary school in the country as well as in many, many homes across the country. But people who simply wouldn't have understood or have heard of the significance of Thomas Francis Marr in the past but now are familiar with his name. And of course his significance for other countries too uh, is being recognized today. Because not only was he born in Waterford, not only did he raise the first tricolour having been and been inspired by France and the French Revolution. Uh, but of course he became a hugely significant figure in the United States in the Civil War there uh, and of course was a relentless advocate for Irish independence and unity. And so as a Minister for Defence it is both appropriate and a privilege for me to be here to commemorate and to celebrate in a year of real significance for Irish people at home and indeed across the globe. Whether you're in Australia, whether you're in Boston, whether you're in any part of Europe, the United Kingdom, Canada, 
or indeed further afield. This is a time of year where Irish people feel proud of where they come from, who they are, what the tricolour that they call their flag stands for. And in many ways today is a ceremony that really is all about that, about where this flag came from, what it means, and what it continues to mean for Irish people as we look to the future. We have an uncertain political landscape in Ireland right now, and we would do well when many of us look to put a stable government together that can serve its people for the years ahead, to the inspiration that we can take from our past in the year of 2016. A hundred years ago, when patriots struck for Irish freedom, and with all that followed from that revolution on our streets, and what has unfolded in the hundred years since then, as Ireland has moved from revolution on its own streets to actually an international peacekeeper, a country that has actually had unbroken peacekeeping for longer now than any other country in the world. We look at our flag as it flies in different parts of the world, in troubled regions like southern Lebanon, like Mali, like the Golan Heights, on the back of a ship in the Mediterranean, as we look to contribute towards efforts for peace and humanitarian assistance and support. As our soldiers are not only warriors, they are also diplomats and counsellors in the battlefields that they face today. And that is why it is so appropriate that in the year of 2016, we have our defence forces, both permanent and reserve, as a fundamental part of the commemorations and celebrations that are unfolding now as we speak. And this is a significant part of that. I must say, uh, as, a, as a minister, but also as a proud Irish person, I was moved by the All Island Peace Choir and their version of Danny Boy. Uh, I heard a lot of, of, of our Irish American friends from behind me singing along with them. Again, I think it is a sign uh, of the emotion uh, of this time of year and indeed this year, 2016 in itself. I hope also that we will reflect this year when we look at the contribution of a man like Thomas Francis Marr. As a 25 year old, raising a tricolour and, and gaining inspiration from that, trying to change the direction of a country by hoisting that flag. And when we reflect on one of the most significant uh, elements of the 2016 commemorations, where we have Defence Force officers taking an Irish flag and indeed the proclamation to 3,600 primary schools across the country to inspire a new young generation of proud Irish people to actually create a vision for what they want for their country. And next week, we will have Proclamation Day, where all of those schools will have written their own proclamation, their dreams, their vision for what they want for their country and its future, their future and their family's future. This is going to be a special year for Ireland, a year when we reflect with pride on our history, but also a year when we look forward and perhaps gaining a new value system from the history that we have shared on this island. Finally, can I, can I thank uh, everybody here, from our musicians and singers to our Defence Force personnel, but in particular those who have travelled across the Atlantic to be here with us. Uh, you remind us by your presence that actually the commemorations in Ireland this year are not simply for this island, they are for a people across the world, all 50 million or so people who call themselves Irish uh, and are hugely uh, engaged and connected with the decisions of the future that this country takes. Uh, so to all of you, thank you for being here. To all of the volunteers who've made this happen, congratulations. Even on a day of rain and winter in Ireland, I think this is a day when a lot of people can look at our national flag and its significance and its statement of peace, both of the last hundred years but also of inspiration for the future.
and I think we can go home with pride that actually this is a year as it unfolds uh, that will be of real significance that we will remember in the future. And Waterford, and indeed in particular Thomas Francis Marr, the son of Waterford, uh, will play a very significant role in those commemorations this year. So congratulations and thank you to everybody involved. I'd like to thank Minister Coveney for his kind words and again I'd like to thank him for travelling today to represent the government here in Waterford City. And now as we come close to the close of the ceremony, I'd like to invite Kieran Doyle, who's actually the professional actor who actually plays Thomas Francis Marr, to come forward and read an extract from Marr's last letter before he left Ireland. My dear Bernard, this morning or tomorrow at furthest, we will be put on board the war brig, which is to convey us to Van Diemen's land, and I most gladly avail myself of a few moments at my disposal to assure you, now that I am on the eve of parting from my sad, poor country, of my very warm esteem and friendship. As I told you in one of my previous letters, the recollections of the days I spent in France and the eventful year of 1848 will be for me, for many a year to come, a source of very deep delight. Would to heaven that the hopes that then shone so brightly above our parts were still visible in our changeful and mournful skies, were still the objects of the people's love, faith, and adoration. But they have disappeared. Clouds on clouds have thickened round them. And in the darkness which covers the land, we hear but the wail of the dying and the supplications of the penniless and the breadless. Never, never has their country been so utterly downcast, so debased, so pitiful, so spiritless. Yet I do not, could not despair at her regeneration. Nations do not die in a day. Their lives are reckoned by generations, and they encompass centuries. Their vitality is inextinguishable. Their sufferings are sometimes terrible. But they have survived the deadly flames, the red inundation of the battlefields, the storms that topples towers and pyramids, the fire in which engulfs cities and buries a whole people in one indistinguishable sepulchre. They have been known to survive all. Greece has so outlived her ruins and her woes. Italy has so outlived her degeneracy and despotisms. Thus too shall Ireland survive all her errors and disasters and rear one day an ark of triumph high above the wreck and wilderness of the past. This is my sincere fate. It is this which in my weary exile will help me forget my solitude, forget my privations, forget all the happiness I have sacrificed and change what would otherwise be a weary bondage into a happy, tranquil dream. Besides, I feel I have done nothing more than my plain duty and hence I cannot be otherwise but proud and happy at this moment. The thoughts of having acted with purity with generosity, in the face of all perils, and at the loss of friends and home and country. This is a never-ending source of the most delightful joy. I would not change places this day with the most happy and comfortable slave in the land. Orders have come. Yours devoutly, Thomas Francis Ma. The expression of the extract there from Kieran representing Thomas Francis Marr. And that uh, quite appropriately leads us into the next piece from the Island of Ireland Peace Choir, which is MLK, which is adapted and dedicated to the vision and legacy 
of Thomas Francis Marr, which was, can be quite similarly on a line with a vision of Martin Luther King. So I'll hand you over to Dr. Phil Brennan and the Island of Ireland Peace Corps. participated in this ceremony today, to those of you who persevered, the miserable day it was, the rain and actually the cold. Thank you very much and a very much proud board for the Irish people. It's much appreciated. Uh, leading on, I would like to thank our VIPs who have travelled. You can see we had a very high calibre list of VIPs today which holds and shows the esteem that Waterford City is held worldwide. So I would like to thank those for travelling. I would like to thank the members of the 69th Regiment and the 42 members who travelled from Minnesota to be with us this weekend. I would like to thank, thank Michael Walsh, CEO of Waterford City and Council and fellow councillors for being very supportive of this event. I would like to thank House of Waterford Crystal for facilitating this today despite the fact we impede upon their services and facilities. I'd like to thank the Island of Ireland Peace Choir for a very moving, inspiration and unique contribution to today's ceremony. I would also like to thank the Barrick Street Concert Band who were very, very professional in the delivery of the military music required today. I would also like to thank who have left the parade ground, the Thomas Francis Marr Fife and Drum Band, the Naval Service Reserve, other members of the Defence Forces, Kieran Dyle the actor, um, and most appropriately, I would like just to say, I would like to thank the 2016 Centenary Committee for their support over the weekend. For those of you who might have missed it, there was a fantastic reenactment here yesterday where we saw in excess of 2,000 people on a, very, on a sunny day for a change, 
uh, experienced a very good reenactment which was funded by the 2016 Centenary Committee. So thank you very much for them for helping us this weekend. And last but not least, I would like to mention that our event here this weekend forms part of the Three Sisters bid for the European City of Culture. For those of you who are not familiar with it, it is a bid that's been led by Waterford City and includes Wexford and Kilkenny to become the European City of Culture. So I would like to thank all the members of that committee for their support to our own event. So with that, I'd like to thank you for today's ceremony and I'm going to call upon the Island of Ireland Peace Choir to finish with, most appropriately, Ireland's call. Thank you. Thank you.